Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at how to remove elements from a binary heap. This is part four or five in the priority queue series. Make sure you watch the last video so you understand the underlying structure of the binary heap. So let's get started. In general with heaps we always want to remove the root value because it's the node of interest. It's the one with the highest priority because it's the smallest or the largest value. When we remove the root, we call it polling. A special thing about removing the root is that we don't need to search for its index, because in an array implementation, it has position or index zero. So when I say poll, in red, we have the node we want to remove, and in purple is the one we're going to swap it with. So the node in purple is always going to be the one at the end of our array, which we also have its index. So we swap them, we get rid of the one, and now since 10 is at the top, well, we're not satisfying the heap invariant. So we need to make sure that the heap invariant is satisfied. So we need to do what's called bubbling down now instead of bubbling up. So what we do is we look at 10's children, 5 and 1, and we select the smallest. And we swap with the smallest. So 10 would go to 1. So make sure you default selecting the left node in case there is a tie. So as you can see, 10 10's children are 2 and 2, uh, they're both equal, so we're going to select the left node to break the tie. And now we bubble down 10 again, and now the heap invariant is satisfied. Now we want to remove the value 12. So polling was removing the element at the root, but 12 is not at the root. However, we still want to be able to remove 12. So what we do is we have to search for 12 in our tree, even though we don't know its position yet. So we start at 1, and we do a linear scan through all our elements until we find 12. So 5 is not 12, 2 is not 12, and so on until find 12. And now we found 12, and now we know where its position is, so we can mark it as the node we want to remove, and also swap it with the purple node being the last node in our tree. Swap them, remove the 12, and now we're in violation of the heap invariant, so now we want to bubble up 3 until the heap invariant is satisfied. And now we've satisfied the heap invariant, so we can stop. Now we want to remove 3, same thing as last time, search for 3 in the tree. 3 wasn't far, it was just 2 nodes away. So now, to remove an element, again, swap it with the last node in the tree, drop it. But now the question is, do we bubble up or bubble down the value? Because you don't really know what the value of the node in the last position is when you're swapping it in. So, so do we bubble up or bubble down? Well, we already satisfied that heap invariant from above, so we need to bubble down 15. So, so 5 was smaller, so we swapped it with 5. Now 8 is smaller, so we swap it with 8. And again, the heap invariant is satisfied. Now we want to pull. So mark the root node red, swap it, remove the 1. And now we would want to bubble down and the heap invariant is satisfied. Now we want to remove 6, so search for 6 in our tree. 
Okay, we have found six. And do the swap. Remove six. Now do we bubble up or bubble down? The answer is neither. The heap invariant is already satisfied, so we don't even need to touch our node. We got lucky. Okay, so from all this polling and removing, we can conclude the following. That polling takes logarithmic time, since we're removing the root and we already know where to find it. And also that removing a random node can take up to linear time, since we have to actually find the index of that node we want to remove before removing it. However, if you're as dissatisfied with this linear removal as I am, you'd figure out that there has to be a better way. And indeed there is, and I'm about to show you a hack to improve this complexity to be logarithmic in the general case. So stay tuned. Okay, so now we're going to look at how to remove nodes from a heap with the improved time complexity. To do this, we'll need to make use of a hash table, a data structure I have not yet covered. So buckle up, things are about to get a little wild. I promise I'll cover the hash table thoroughly in a later video, but right now it's going to look like magic. Back to the central issue, we have a bunch of nodes scattered across our heap at some positions, and instead of doing a linear scan to find out where the node we want to remove is, we just want to be able to do a lookup and figure that out. The way we're going to do this is that every node is going to be mapped to the index it's found at. So when we want to remove a particular node, we just look up its index instead of doing a linear scan. Sounds good, right? That sounds great, except for one caveat or two. What about if the heap has multiple nodes with the same value. What problems would that cause? Well, just a few, but nothing we can't handle. To begin with, let's talk about how we can deal with the multiple value problem. Well, instead of mapping one value to one position, we will map one value to multiple positions. And we can do this by maintaining a set or a tree set of indices for which a particular node value or, or key if you want maps to. Let's look at an example. Okay, so observe the blue heap. Remark that it has repeated values. Namely, we can see that the two is there three times, seven is there twice, 11 and 13 once. Below I have drawn the index tree, a tree which can help us determine the index position of a node in the tree. 11, for example, is at index 3, 13 at index 5, and the first two at index 0. On the left is the hash table with the key value pairs. Notice that 2 is found in three positions. 0, 2, and 6, while 7 is found in two positions, 1 and 4, and so on. So this is how we're going to keep track of the positions of the values in the tree. If nodes start moving in the tree, we also need to keep track of that. For example, if a bubble up or a bubble down occurs, we need to track all of those movements and where the swaps go to so we can update the index position in our map. If we swap 13, and the last seven, for example, the following should happen. So we look at where seven and 13 are in our table, and then I've mapped those respective positions as red for the seven and yellow for the 13. And this is what happens when we do a swap. We do a swap in the tree, but also in the table. And that's it. Okay, so this all sounds great. We keep track of repeated values by maintaining a set of indices, a particular node with a particular value is found out. But now let's ask a further question. If we want to remove a repeated node in our heap, which node do we remove and does it matter? Because if we look in our heap right here, there's three possible two values we could remove. Does it matter which one we remove? 
The answer is no, it does not matter. As long as, in the end, we satisfy the heap invariant. That's the most important thing. So let's look at an example, not just of removing, but also of adding and pulling elements with this new scheme I just proposed. It's not that hard, trust me. So first one, we want to insert three. So we need to place three at the bottom of the heap in the insertion position. We also need to track where the new node is. So we add three to our table along with its position, which happens to be at index seven. Look at the index tree in gray to confirm this. Now that three is, has been inserted, we need to make sure the heap invariant is satisfying. Currently, it is not. So what we do is we bubble up three. The parent of three is 11, which is greater than three. So we need to swap those two nodes. I've highlighted the seven in the index tree because it maps to three in the heap and three in the index tree because it maps to the value 11. Now swap those both in the tree and in the table. Awesome. Now the heap variant is still not satisfied, so do a similar thing for the node above. We grab the parent and do a swap in the tree and the table. And now the heap va invariant is satisfied. So three has been inserted successfully. The next instruction is to remove two from the heap. So which two should we remove? Well, as I said, it doesn't matter as long as we satisfy the heap invariant in the end. If we remove the last two, we can immediately satisfy the heap invariant with one swap. But for learning purposes, I will simply remove the first one found in our set, which happens to be located at index zero. So we want to remove the two at position zero. So how do we remove a node again? So we did a lookup, so we didn't have to do that linear scan, which was nice. And now we swap it with the end, the last node, which happens to be 11. We remove the last node. Now we need to satisfy the heap invariant. So we need to bubble down 11. So we look at 11's children, which happens to be three and two. Two is smaller. So it's the one we're going to swap with. So swap it in the table and in the tree. Now we are still not in satisfaction of the heap invariant. So look at 11's children being 13 and two. Two is smaller, so swap it with two. And that's it, we're done. The last instruction says to pull. So get the value at the root which is two, and swap it with 11. Get rid of the two, and bubble down 11. So as you can see, we're constantly updating our table, but still doing the same operations. So that's how you do quick removals in a priority queue. So guys, thanks for watching, and in the next video, I promise we'll look at some source code for all this crazy stuff that's been going on. The source code can be found at the link provided on this page. Uh, stick around if you want to see an implementation in detail. Also, the link to that should be in the description below. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.